We're off to the land in today's episode. Play ball. So you spent the night at a friend's house, and they insisted on making you watch the classic 1989 movie, Major League. You were enlightened, and before you know it, you're saying, thank you, Charlie Sheen and Tom Berenger. Because of you guys, I now want to know more about the magical baseball team, the Indians. My name is Jeff Lurkey, and here's what you need to know and how to be a Cleveland Indians fan. Located in Cleveland, Ohio, the Indians play in the American League of Major League Baseball. Their division is the AL Central, and their colors are red, navy blue, and white. Being a part of the original 16 teams in the MLB, the Indians have a long history of accomplishments. Their hardware includes two World Series titles, six American League pennants, 10 Central Division titles, and have 14 postseason appearances. To boot, the franchise has 35 inductees in the MLB Hall of Fame. Fun fact. The Indians became a major league franchise in 1901 and currently has the longest active World Series championship drought with their last one being in 1948. Okay, not so fun. But the franchise also had a sellout streak from 1995 to 2001, selling out 455 consecutive home games. In honoring those fans, the Indians retired the number 455. So that's pretty cool. Finally, the Indians hold the American League record for consecutive wins at 22 games. Beat that. The smell of the fresh cut grass, the crack of the bat, and the seventh inning stretch are viewed as traditions for any ballpark. But every team has a very unique tradition at their own stadium. For Cleveland, it's easily the drummer. John Adams, a Clevelander, has been playing his bass drum at home games for the tribe since 1973. His contribution of beating the drum sets the Indians' ballpark atmosphere apart as one of a kind. You can even hear it while watching the game on TV. Clearly I'm not fit for drumming, but I'm phenomenal with a tambourine. Now that we have the basics, let's look at some standout players and managers that etched their name in Indians history. The best pitcher the Indians ever had and arguably baseball has ever seen was number 19 Bob Feller. He began his career with the Indians when he was only 17, and it was where he played his entire 18 season career with. Feller was the all-time leader in wins and strikeouts by a pitcher, 8-time All-Star, 7-time MLB strikeout leader, and a World Series champion in 1948. What's wild to think that when World War II broke in 1941, he enlisted in the Navy and fought on the USS Alabama battleship. After the war, he went back to the mound for the tribe and played until 1956. Inducted in Cooperstown in 62 and is truly a gem for the franchise. One of Bob Feller's World Series championship teammates was number 14 Larry Doby. Seven-time All-Star, two-time AL home run leader and AL RBI leader in 1954. In Game 4 of the 1948 World Series, Larry hit the first home run by a black player in World Series history. What most people don't know about Larry is that he was the first black player to play in the American League. Even though Jackie Robinson was the first black player in Major League Baseball, he played in the National League. Doby was also inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1994. When it comes to the plate and offense, no one did it better than number 25, Jim Tomey. The Indians' all-time leader in home runs and walks by a hitter, Tomey was a three-time All-Star with the Tribe. Arguably the nicest guy in baseball, Tomey came close to becoming a World Series champion in 1995 and 1997. He was also on the roster during the entire 455 sellout streak. Even though he played with other ball clubs throughout his 22-year career, he was recently inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2018 wearing an Indians cap. Managing a team is difficult, and having great managers in your franchise like Mike Hargrove, Lou Boudreau, and today's skipper, Terry Francona, is great. But one stood out in Indians history that's worth spotlighting, and that's number 20, Frank Robinson. Frank was the Indians player manager in 1975, which officially made him the first black manager in MLB history. 
His first at-bat with the Indians in his new role, he hit a home run. His managerial record was a respective 496 winning percentage from 75 to 77, but more importantly started to integrate racial equality not only on the field as a player, but in managing jobs as well. During the seventh inning stretch at the stadium, head on over to Heritage Park, which is behind center field. There you'll see all the other great players and managers of Indians history. All right, the last thing you need to know, and it's the most important information in this lesson. Who do we disdain when we cheer for the tribe? You can argue it's the Chicago White Sox, or even the Cincinnati Reds, to which I couldn't disagree with you. But one ball club that surpasses both is the Detroit Tigers. They are the closest city to Cleveland and has the oldest standing rivalry dating back to May 3rd, 1901, in the inaugural season of American League play. These two teams spent the most time battling for the same American League title and played the most games against one another with over 2,000 plus. To make matters worse, the Indians did a trade that went south with Detroit back in 1960. Two days before opening day, the Indians traded Rocky Calavito a slugging right fielder and the previous season's home run champ for Harvey King, the AL batting champ. Rocky averaged nearly 35 home runs a year for Detroit and made two all-star appearances with the Tigers in four years, while King made one all-star appearance and lasted only one season with the Tribe. After that trade, the Indians experienced what some people call the 33-year slump, where the team finished 11 games or below out of first place every season until 1994. Ouch. Ironically, the Indians have yet to face the Tigers in the playoffs, which is wild to think because if they did, the Indians would clearly dominate and advance. Okay, let's recap. The Indians play in the AL Central. They have an incredible and loyal fan base with an awesome drummer. Two World Series titles. Bob Feller is king. And you really dislike the Detroit Tigers. So, wear your C baseball cap proud and cheer on the tribe when you visit the land. Who knows, you may witness history when they win the World Series, their first since 1948. Then we can chant all day long, Cleveland rocks, Cleveland rocks. Cleveland rocks, Cleveland rocks, Woo! That's my dad. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's Lurks lesson episode. Please subscribe to my channel and also leave some comments on what other cool things Indians fans really need to know. While you're at it, leave some suggestions of what other fan bases I need to showcase next. Alright, we'll see you guys next time.